everyone. Thanks for joining us for Fairfield Study Abroad Options and Opportunities. My name is Nicole Maffa. I'm the Program Manager at Fairfield University, and this is my colleague, Megan Dakotis, Program Coordinator in the office. We're going to talk to you today about what to do, um, so planning and processes, where to go, so the options that we have for our students, as well as when to do it, the timelines and the deadlines for our students. So, we do a lot in our office helping students uh, in the planning for study abroad. Uh, and really we want to enforce the, um, the opinion that we have that every student at Fairfield, regardless of major, has the opportunity to study abroad with the proper planning. So uh, it can take some time starting freshman year, but really we, we want to see everyone have the opportunity to do that. Uh, so we encourage everyone to start early. Um, we have an event every year, the Study Abroad Fair, um, that happens the third Tuesday in September, and it's really the kickoff to um, the planning process for the year. Uh, and this year, actually, we're having uh, a secondary event this February 8th, um, a week from, two weeks from today, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a study abroad day. So it's sort of a similar idea to the study abroad fair, but a little bit of a smaller scale. And both events really showcase um, all of our different programs um, and some of the options that students have. <laughs> So the first thing um, besides those two events that a student should do if they're interested in studying abroad um, is attend an information session. We hold these sessions daily in our office um, at various times um, and students can find the, inform the information for the dates and the times online. Um, after attending an information session, there's uh, a couple other things that are important in terms of eligibility. The first being um, in good standing with the Dean of Students, and that's both at the time of application and at the time of participation in the program. The students must have a cumulative GPA of at least a 2.8 in order to study abroad. So that's a Fairfield University requirement. And then um, sometimes the specific program that they're applying to might have a higher GPA. So 2.8 is really the minimum there. And we explain this, um, our advising philosophy for the students um, during the information sessions. But really, we like to start the process by um, encouraging each student to really set goals for themselves in terms of what they want out of a study abroad experience. So um, that can be, you know, is there a particular destination they want to go to? Do they want to be able to take a lot of classes in their major? Are they looking for an internship opportunity? All of those types of things are really what we want students to think about for themselves. Um, and then really look at the, the types of programs that Fairfield offers um, and see which program will fit their goals best and really then at the end apply to the one program for that term. Um, things to think about, major, minor, um, language ability, academic term, those are all things that will fit into um, the program that they choose. Again, the academic program, what extracurricular activities they might be involved in um, here on campus and then might, what might be available to them if they're interested while they're abroad. Um, any accessibility needs and then um, the type of program or institution that they're studying in. All right, so Fairfield University has four different, um, if you will, umbrella types of categories. So we have semester programs, which um, is the widest of our portfolio. So they're available in the most locations for the most amount of our majors. We also have summer programs as well. These are programs that run between three and eight weeks in length. Um, and these programs are best for our students that are athletes um, who are, you know, maybe a little bit more of a homebody, not as comfortable for being abroad for an extended period of time, um, or those who just have a really rigid academic curriculum um, and it might be the best fit for them to go for summer so it doesn't set them behind in graduation. Um, and then we also have faculty-led programs. Faculty-led programs run um, between our January intercession program, spring break, or during the summer. Um, a faculty-led program is a little bit different than most of our summer offerings in that a faculty-led program is a faculty member from Fairfield University that's taking a smaller cohort of students abroad with them. Um, whereas our summer programs, the majority of those are students directly enrolling in a foreign institution or program overseas. So though they are offered in summer, they are just a little bit different um, than our regular summer programs. These are a little bit shorter in length, ranging for on average about 10 days. And we also have year-long programs as well. We have some students that participate in year-long programs, which means that the program itself is a year in length. And some students will uh, pair two different programs um, to do some type of cultural comparison. So they'll pick one program for the fall, and then they'll choose to study abroad again in the spring in another location. And then we have two different 
categories, if you will, of programs. So we have Fairfield Center programs and we have non-Fairfield Center programs. Um, Fairfield Center programs are administered by Fairfield University staff and students on these programs receive Fairfield credit and grade. So it's going to go on their transcript as if they were on campus um, and it will impact their GPA. Programs where we have Fairfield Center programs are Florence, Madrid, Galway, our Australia centers in both Brisbane and Sydney, Aix-en-Provence and Managua, Nicaragua. And then we also have non-Fairfield programs. Non-Fairfield programs are administered by outside organizations or some of our other partner institutions. And students on these programs will receive transfer credit. Um, students will still receive credit for the program. It'll still go toward the total number of classes and total number of credits the students need to graduate. And we'll work with all students on how to get their courses approved and what courses will fulfill which requirements once they're accepted. Um, but it won't impact their GPA. And this is where our widest portfolio sits. So we have about 50 um, plus programs around the world in our non-Fairfield program locations. Certain departments and colleges have also gone through and preferred programs for their students. Now, by no means is this list comprehensive. This is not the only place, for example, a School of Engineering or a Dolan School of Business can study. These are just locations that the departments have, have if you will, identified where they would like their students to go. Um, the College of Arts and Sciences, the programs do vary by department um, since academic offerings for um, example, the art history department will be different than those um, for the biology department. So we do recommend that students reach out to our office for those preferred programs by department or programs that would be best for their students um, and or to connect with the department chair for assistance. assistance excuse me. The School of Engineering has identified our program with UCA in Managua, Nicaragua, our program with uh, NUI Galway, and our program at Comillas University is best programs for their engineering students, which will allow them to continue their graduation track, take engineering courses abroad, and not fall behind in graduation. Um, similarly uh, is our nursing program. Our nursing program has done the same thing. So they have worked with the National University of Ireland Galway, as well as Australia Catholic University, which is our Brisbane campus partnership, um, to continue their nursing classes for that semester. And then the Dolan School of Business has identified five um, strategic partners where they would prefer their students to participate in programs, um, which are really rigorous in their business curriculum offerings. So talking a little bit about um, finances. So this is something that comes up a lot in conversations with mm -hmm. students. Um, and Fairfield has a bit of a um, unique structure, especially for our summer programs uh, in terms of financing. So regardless of program location, if a student is studying abroad for a semester, they will pay Fairfield tuition, or they, I'm sorry, they will be billed for Fairfield tuition, Fairfield room, and then a portion of board if it's applicable. So for example, um, if a student is living abroad in an apartment or a situation where they have a kitchen and they can make their own meals, they won't be charged for the meal portion. Um, federal financial aid um, and scholarships will transfer and this happens the majority of the time. There's a few um, exceptions to that rule and you can um, contact the Office of Financial Aid directly for those specific um, restrictions but generally speaking the, anything used during the semester at Fairfield would transfer abroad as well. Um, other costs that you would have to consider to come out of pocket either prior to or during the semester abroad. Um, two of the bigger ones are flights and visas and of course those will um, vary depending on the program location. Um, and then again that board wherever it's applicable. Um, we always encourage students to really think about these considerations um, depending on the program, depending on which, which time of year they want to go abroad and think about a budget. Um, and then a lot of scholarships as well which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, summer works similarly but a little bit different in that there's one billable program cost and this is a, a comprehensive fee really that covers um, tuition, room, um, any other program component fees that go into each program. Um, sometimes it's board, again it's similar to the semester structure where board could be included if that's appropriate for the program. Um, and then again there's the other costs that would come out of pocket prior to or during the time abroad for the summer. So flights and visas if applicable, board if applicable. Um, Fairfield, like I said, the scholarships and financial aid can be used and that is only for one semester. Um, some majors can use it for a full year abroad, but there's only a few um, that can. Um, and again, there's a few exceptions, like I said before, athletic scholarships, tuition exchange, things like that. 
Um, there are lots of external scholarships available. We try to um, mention this to our students as much as possible and encourage them to really take the initiative and um, and do the research and try to find these. We list a number of options on our website, but there's so much information out there. Just doing a Google search on study abroad scholarships, um, students can really find a lot, especially for summer and shorter term programs um, where that, that cost is separate than the semester. So this is a little bit about um, the way Again, our office sees the advising process. Like I said earlier, um, the information session is really the first um, required component and step in this process. Um, after attending an information session, like I said, we really encourage students to consider those goals um, that they have and do the research on what programs are available um, and how the programs that are available meet their goals. Um, and then we always encourage students to meet with their academic advisors, um, get on board early, um, and, and talk to them about what types of classes are important for you to be able to take abroad and what you should leave and take here on campus. Um, and you can, they can always set up at that time a meeting with a study abroad advisor as well. So Nicole or myself um, or anyone else in our office to kind of walk through the program components um, for what they're considering. And then after all of that, um, what's really left is to, to apply. So the applications are all done online and they can be found on our website, which is fairfield.edu backslash study abroad. Uh, the major components to the application are an essay, a $75 application fee. Um, sometimes there's a recommendation letter or letters um, required. And then there's a bunch of policy information, a lot of stuff that we want students to be able to um, be notified of ahead of time and really get a chance to digest, um, look through, take their time with. And, and basically we ask that they sign off on saying that they've read it and that they understand it before even a, um, sending in the application. So here's a look at some of the deadlines. So um, right now we're kind of working towards the summer deadline, which is coming up on February 1st. Um, we've already had some summer applications come in. The fall and year applications for fall of 2017 mm -hmm. and for the year 2017-18, uh, everything happens a, a few semesters <laughs> ahead, so it gets a little confusing. Uh, but that fall year deadline passed in um, December. And so we're looking ahead in terms of the semester to the spring deadline, um, which comes up in May and applications for spring um, begin in March. So really at this point our office is working with students who have applied for the fall, uh, who are applying or will be applying for the spring, which begins on March 1st, um, and then all summer applications are due on February 1st. Um, a few things to, to look at on this um, grid as well, and this kind of helps give an idea in terms of planning. Um, the decision date that you see there is the date that students are notified, basically the latest date they would be notified of whether or not they've been approved by Fairfield to go abroad. Um, so that's important really in terms of the students planning, our planning, and your planning as well. And between that decision date and the deposit date is when we're really asking of the student to make the final decision of whether or not they want to go abroad. Because the deposit date, um, and for this semester, it's, it's truly a deposit, and for the summer, it's the full program cost. But at that deposit date is when um, students are financially um, committed to going abroad, essentially. Um, the deposit for the semesters, like I said, is a true deposit, and it's a $1,000 deposit. And that is then later deducted from the bill that you will receive. Um, so it's a deposit in terms of we are committing um, you know, our efforts and the students' efforts to move forward with the program. And then, like I said, summer is the full program cost. All right, so then following the approval, um, we will have approved student meetings. So during these meetings, um, these meetings occur for both the semester year and summer students, regardless of term, um, we'll go over important information that they need to know and what are their next steps, right? So they've just, you know, finally decided on their study abroad program, their destination, um, but how does that look academically? You know, what courses are offered and how do they how do they get those courses approved? How do they register? Um, what are the academic policies of that institution? So we'll go over all of those next steps for the students. Um, we'll make sure that the courses that they're interested in taking are approved at Fair by Fairfield University. Um, and we'll assist the students in making sure that they are picking the appropriate courses um, for their academic trajectory. So our office is here to assist the student to ensure a timely graduation. Um, 
to make sure that the classes they're taking will count. They're not just going abroad for five general electives. Um, the other thing that we'll do is we'll walk the students through the program specific information. So for example, some of our programs will require an additional application. So our office will be granting approval for that student to study abroad, um, but the student still may need to apply to that institution or to that provider um, to actually be accepted. Um, we'll also walk the students through uh, what are the program dates, so when should they arrive, when should they depart, which airport do they arrive to, um, any time, airport pickup, excursions, uh, orientation, um, things like that. In addition, we'll talk about how to book your flight. Um, we'll walk the students through some of our passport requirements and the visa requirements of their country, medical insurance, what to do in case of an emergency, uh, packing tips, things like that. So all of that occurs after the student has been approved by our office to study abroad. Um, as Megan said, after students have committed um, their deposit by March 1st for the fall and year 1718 and for spring October 1st and for summer March 1st, um, all students will have a pre-departure session. Um, this pre-departure is a comprehensive pre-departure session that oversees all of our health and safety um, while abroad. So we actually have our director of public safety, Todd Plaza, come um, and he gives a, a comprehensive uh, presentation to our students about health and safety, what to do in case of an emergency. Um, in addition, we have the Dean of Students um, or the Associate Dean of Students come and speak with our students about uh, student code of conduct. So what happens if you get in trouble while you're abroad? Um, you know, what do those consequences look like? And then we also have a risk management and managing expectations presentation given by our director, uh, Ms. Jennifer Ewald. Um, and we also have a parent page uh, specifically for parents. So if you go on our website, again, it's fairfield.edu backslash study abroad. Um, this is really where all of our content lives. So this is a screenshot of our main page. Um, if you actually click on, I don't have my glasses on, but I'm pretty sure that says Fairfield student or Fairfield parents. Yep. <laughs> uh, if you click on that link, it'll give you um, comprehensive information of things to know as a parent or guardian um, for your child studying abroad. Um, if you click on the Fairfield Students tab, there will be more information about where you can find approved programs, where you can find those preferred programs that we mentioned earlier, um, in addition to our policies, procedures, withdrawal, um, emergency contact, um, risk management policies, things along those lines. So those can all be found under the Fairfield Students tab, um, but those links are also embedded within the parent page as well. And you can follow us on social media. Those are all four of our accounts. So we have a Facebook page, a Twitter, and an Instagram. Um, in addition, we have a student's blog throughout their semester as well. So if you're looking really for a, a student's perspective um, on their semester abroad, the Tumblr page is a really great way to kind of see what our students are doing while they're abroad. Um, and then this is our office information. So we're in the Office of Study Abroad. Uh, we are located in Dolan House, not to be confused with the Dolan School of Business or Dolan Commons or Dolan Hall. Um, <laughs> we are up in Dolan House. So if anyone has any questions on how to find us, just give us a call. We'd be happy to, to connect you. And then our email is studyabroad at fairfield.edu and our extension is there. Um, but we're happy to take any questions if anyone has any. <laughs> Uh, one parent asked, what type of information goes into the essay that students write before they study abroad? That's a great question. Um, so I think we've got four different portions mm -hmm. um, for the essay, and really we're looking for uh, a number of different things, but we want the student to be able to connect um, what it means to be abroad versus here at Fairfield. So why is it special to be able to experience another culture? How is it going to be different for them? Maybe what challenges or um, you know, what obstacles will they have to overcome in order to succeed abroad? Um, we also ask them as well how it's going to tie into their career um, and their academic goals. So again, there is a study in study abroad. Um, so we want to make sure that the students are able to articulate why this program. So as a, for example, business student, why is it important for me to study abroad at IAU? Um, or why is it important for me to study at the London School of Economics? So we really want to make sure, too, that the students have done their research. They understand why they're picking this university. Um, each essay question is between I think two and three hundred words. Um, so we like to make sure that the students are really doing their research beforehand. Um, a lot of information is found on our brochure pages, which again are if you click on Fairfield students, if you click on complete list of approved programs, um, you'll see the complete list there um, and the brochure pages to follow. Can Magis scholars use their $1,500 grant for study abroad programs? 
they can. Um, I'm not sure as to the specifics of that. I would recommend your student reach out to the Dean of Students office um, as the grant does sit with their office. So um, the logistics behind that and how those funds are distributed, um, I'm not sure if there's any restrictions on those, but uh, I know that students can use that, but the Dean of Students office is the best resource to answer that question. Uh, one parent asked, are internship opportunities available in conjunction with study abroad? Yes, uh, definitely. <laughs> We're actually really excited about that. We have um, partnered with um, a great um, program called Global Experiences, um, and they are located in a number of different locations where we also have our center programs. So we're piloting the program, or we piloted it last semester um, in Florence, and we're going to be making it available um, in some of our other center programs as well in the upcoming semesters. Um, but we also have some, some of the programs all, already have internship component um, built into them. So it really depends on where the student wants to go, but there are a lot of opportunities out there. Absolutely. Um, and just to go off of that too, Global Experiences will be on campus during Study Abroad Day on February 8th. So if your student has any questions about that internship, um, where can I study for an internship? Again, it is internship in conjunction with classes, so it's not just a strict 15 credit internship. Um, Global Experiences will be here and they'll be the great, the best resource to answer any internship questions. Where can I be placed? How does that placement work? Um, and then if your uh, student decides to participate in another program where, for example, the university places the student in the internship, we, um, one of our colleagues actually oversees all internship placements. So she'd be the best resource. And again, if you email study abroad at Fairfield, we can make sure that you're connected to her directly. The next question, how does housing work for the semester the student is on campus at Fairfield mm -hmm. and upon their return to That's Fairfield? That's a great question. <laughs> so I'll use this current cycle as our example. So our students who are applying to study abroad for the fall of 2017 um, will not enter into the housing lottery. The students that are interested in studying abroad for the spring of 2018 will enter into the housing lottery and will um, secure their housing for the fall semester. Sometime in November, just want to make sure I'm getting my months right, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sometime in November, uh, the Office of Residence Life will reach out to all students who are abroad for the fall and will send an email saying, hello students, you know, we notice that you're currently abroad. Um, do you need housing for the spring of 2018? And at that time, students are able to request specific rooms um, or specific roommates directly through the Office of uh, Residence Life and they will assist the students in placement um, of the fall students back onto campus for spring. If a student is applying for spring 2018, as I said, they'll go into housing as if they were on campus um, and all they do is leave. So they don't really have to worry about uh, doing anything like that. We just um, ask that they do make sure that all of their uh, belongings are removed from the residence hall. <laughs> um, let's see here. If applying this March or May, March to May, mm -hmm. how is the current semester grade factored into the GPA requirement? Yes. So between May and July, I will review all of our spring 2018 applications. Um, and I do really want to make sure that the students who are right on that cusp of a 2.8, uh, maybe they're at a 2.6 and they're working really hard this semester to pull it up. Um, I do want to factor their current semester grades in. So I actually won't review applications and make any final decisions until all of the fall 7, what term are we in? Spring 20. 17 grades are submitted. We do want to make sure that all of those are there. Um, and students are also encouraged, um, though it is not a required part of the essay, if students don't have the GPA requirement at time of application, I do ask students to submit a small blurb about, you know, maybe why they don't have that GPA requirement. So for example, some students may have said, I came in as major A um, and it really wasn't the best fit for me and I really struggled with my classes, but I've changed majors to major B and it's a really great fit. I'm doing a lot better in my classes. And those are things that we really take into consideration. So if a student is applying and doesn't quite have the 2.8, I do recommend for summer and semester as well that students um, really kind of explain what they're doing to pull up their GPA and any struggles that they may have had. Uh, one parent wrote, what percentage of students applying are accepted for study abroad programs? Ooh. I wouldn't know the percentage offhand, but I, I mean, I think a lot of the planning that we do and the work that we do with students, students really know whether or not they're, they have the um, qualifications in place to be accepted into study abroad. So. Um, Oftentimes the students are accepted and really 
you know, we're looking for a few things, and it's our goal to get students mm -hmm. to be able to study abroad. So as long as they have, you know, the requirements in place, um, there's nothing, that, it's not typically like a capacity issue or anything like mm -hmm. that. Some of our programs do have capacity. Um, for example, some of our nursing programs have a capacity. Um, some of our new partnerships um, with our exchange programs have capacity. But for the most part, as Megan had stated, you know, we want to get students abroad. That's why we're in this field. That's why, you know, we're in the office we are. Um, but things to keep in mind as well, Dean of Students standing. Um, you know, we do not only look at who's on probation, but what is your history with the Dean of Students office as well. Um, but really, at the end of the day, if a student has a really strong essay, they have great references, um, have everything submitted and on time, and have picked an appropriate program, I mean, our, our goal is to send your, your student. The last question, uh, is there a semester that tends to be in more high demand for students to study abroad during? I'm actually surprised that there is not, but what I will say is certain majors, there is a sway. So for example, the nursing students, should they decide to study abroad for a semester, the only semester option they have at this time is to study abroad in the spring of their junior year. Um, if we go back to our um, presentation PowerPoint slide with the preferred programs, you'll see engineering, the program that was for UCA, um, which is our partner in Managua, Nicaragua. That is a sophomore only program for the fall. Um, certain majors, however, so for example, I believe accounting and finance do suggest that students really consider um, their career path and when their recruitment cycle is, and they consider that in selecting either fall or spring. Um, but I would say for the majority of our students, there is not a preferred semester between fall and spring. Our, our numbers are actually pretty even, which is exciting. Great. Those are all the questions. Well, thank you very much, thank everyone. You. Again, follow us on social media, and if you have any questions, our contact information is on the screen. Thanks so much.